This is the CSS SDX 12 build. CSS sent this over to me and it includes the 12 inch CSS SDX 12, two passive radiators, and a flat pack that weighs about 70 pounds. Just look at it. There were a lot of pieces to this flat pack, so I needed to make sure that I knew how to assemble it before I glued it together. So the dry fit looked really good and just showed me how good this flat pack really was. I mean, just look at all the bracing. This makes a completely inert flat pack, which gives you a very good sound. I'll talk a little bit about that after I show you the build. They did a really great job on this flat pack and I gotta say if you don't have a lot of tools or you don't want to build your own this has been one of the best flat packs in fact I would say the best flat pack that I can remember ever coming across they did a really great job seeing seeing this This flat pack was really designed for those with minimal tools. I mean, it goes together very smoothly and really easy to fit in the right slots. However, I do recommend having a rubber mallet on hand just to gently tap things into place if they should come unaligned. Don't be afraid to add glue at all the joints. I mean, you never want to get back inside this box and a flat pack this nice, you might as well do it right. Now this piece is actually optional on the flat pack. It comes with it. It's really for those who want to use a plate amplifier, but I talked to CSS and they recommended using it either way. Now I had a little bit of trouble getting mine in, so I had to just tap it into place. Tap, tap, tap it into place. And I actually ended up using a little bit of screws as well. The flat pack itself doesn't come with any instructions. There are just a few diagrams that show you basically what piece and what part of the MDF cabinet goes where. Having said that, these cabinets have a little bit of CNC tolerance built in, which means that you probably don't want to tighten down your clamps all the way until you have all the pieces fit around the cube. Otherwise, those pieces only well, may not fit. In fact, it's really best just to glue the entire outside of the cabinet all together at once and just make sure you have enough clamps on hand that's enough of the gluing let's get down to the finish work After I sanded this down, I wanted to put a little bondo on the seams. This I put down very lightly just to kind of hide any of seams that might show otherwise.
after sanding the Bondo down, I did add some oil-based primer. This stuff works really well. I used a paintbrush, but a foam brush gets it on a little bit smoother. So use whatever you'd like here. After this, I am gonna sand this down, but this will allow the uh, spray paint, once you spray paint it, to adhere directly to the MDF and it won't get soaked in like it normally would. Now you can see how the brush works in the primer, so we're just gonna sand that down, down to 600 grit to get that nice and flat before we start putting down our spray paint. Once it's all painted, I'm gonna wet sand down to 600 grit again to get that nice glossy finish. Now this subwoofer is pretty high end and because of that, I wanted to give it a nice finish. Now for the top, I added some glue on the top. I didn't go all the way to the edges because I didn't want it to seep out onto the paint that was already finished. And this isn't anything structural. This is literally just a design element. So I added a cedar top to this as I found some leftover cedar in my wood shop. And honestly, it looks really nice and it's going to look even better when we epoxy it. I couldn't leave the top just looking like a box. I had to do something a little bit different. So I grabbed an OG bit and cut that right out. And I gotta say, it added a nice look to it. Don't worry about knowing or not knowing what an OG bit is. I'll link one down in the description for you. It's epoxy time. Now I love using this particular epoxy because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's very easy to measure out and of course mix together. Now I decided just to epoxy the tabletop. So I did a real light skim coat. And then after that dried, I did do a flood coat. Now one thing you will notice is that I had some blue painter's tape kind of lifted up over the edge. And the reason why I did that is so that if any drips came, hopefully they would drip away from the black paint. And for the most part, it did a really good job. However, there were a couple spots that I did have to try to clean up. I absolutely love these feet because I think they look amazing. And I chose these off of Amazon purely because of that. Unfortunately, what I did not realize is that they use an adhesive backing. And because of that, well, they don't really work well on this subwoofer. This subwoofer is very heavy and Honestly, I've never used an adhesive backing foot like this. Typically, they screw in, and uh, this really wasn't going to work well. Although I did put them on, and promptly they fell off the first time that I moved them, so I wouldn't recommend these. So here's some pro tips for installing this driver. This subwoofer is very heavy. The subwoofer itself is about 50 pounds. Now CSS did create a double front baffle and that's a really good thing because honestly, it needs it. It does not need to be screwed in with screws. In fact, you shouldn't. You need to be using some type of T-nuts with some like machine screws instead of wood screws. I recommend putting the subwoofer in first and then gently rotating it from where the passive radiators are to make sure that you line up all your T-nuts. I typically use one quarter inch T-nuts with my Pro Audio drivers. That's not gonna fit inside this one. This one, you need something more like a 1024. Unfortunately, typically when you buy these in the store, they're silver. So I recommend spray painting them with some black paint then also using some clear coat just to keep them from chipping.
when you install the passive radiators, you can use just basic wood screws. That's going to be fine for those. Thankfully, CSS sent all the weights needed for the passive radiator, and there's quite a bit. You just got to unscrew the cap in the middle, add the weight, and then screw it back on. Now that it's built, we have to decide how to hook it up. I used a speak on connection to an external amplifier, in this case, the Crown XTI 2002. This can easily power this subwoofer and has built in DSP that I can save and label for each particular subwoofer I'm using. Now you're probably wondering what I think of the subwoofer. It really sounds great. In fact, this is the best sounding 12 inch subwoofer that I can ever remember having my hands on. It's just a very clean sounding subwoofer. I would go as far as even calling it a hi-fi subwoofer. If you're looking for really clean articulate bass, that's what this offers. Now it's not necessarily the loudest or goes down the deepest. In fact, I think there's probably some subwoofers I've built that might go down a little bit deeper than this. However, this is by far the first one that I've heard that just sounds great playing all of the notes. In fact, sitting in my normal listening position, I can't hear any motor noise. I don't hear the subwoofer strain at all. In fact, it will go from zero to, okay, I need to turn down the subwoofer without any sign of stress on the subwoofer itself. It really speaks volumes to CSS and their design structure of this particular subwoofer. Now, one thing we haven't really mentioned was the size of this box. This is an 18 and a half inch cube, and that's pretty amazing because we're getting bass down to 20 hertz with a 12 inch subwoofer that has audiophile and hi-fi quality bass. You just don't see a lot of those on the market. So if you're looking for a smaller subwoofer and you want that highly articulate bass, I think the CSS SDX12 should be one that you're looking at. This is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.